All right, Hotep, how's everybody doing? Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, election writer. We are out here for day number three of Juneteenth Atlanta, Juneteenth Atlanta celebration 2018, Sunday, June 17th, 2018. It's going down here at Mosley Park, 1565 Martin Luther King uh, Drive, 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. tonight. So we're back out here again. And uh, I'm at my vendor table. We have vendors out here as well. It's a free event. Everybody in Atlanta, come on out. And tonight, 8.20 p.m., the one and only Angie Stone is performing. She's doing a free concert at the main stage. The main stage is over here where performances take place. So Angie Stone will be performing tonight. Free concert, 8.20 p.m. Uh, and then there's a fireworks show after that. You can visit JuneteenthATL.com. JuneteenthATL.com for more information. All right. And I'm here at my vendor table. Let's see. I'm underneath the shade here at my vendor table here. Also, if you, if you like this type of information, you want to donate to the African History Network, you can donate at paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Paypal.me, me forward slash the AHN show to help support the African History Network. Helps me to get around travel because I had to pay my way out here, to pay my way back home. Okay. All right, so I'm at my vendor table also. We're going to talk some about the history of Juneteenth in just a second. But uh, I'm, I'm here on the main path. We got vendors next to me. We got people selling water, all types of things, T-shirts. With some of my DVD lectures here, we have the Black Panther Analysis, African Culture, History, and Afrofuturism. It's a three-hour presentation I've done dealing with the, history, with the Black Panther film. We got uh, my lecture dealing with Black Wall Street. We got Urban Kryptonite, the documentary. We got uh, some of my presentations, the racist history, the white national anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, the distortion of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We got a bundle pack out here today. You get six DVD presentations uh, of my lectures for $50. So this is celebrating Juneteenth number one out here. Juneteenth. I'm going to explain what that is because some people don't know. Number two, well, we are commemorating the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, April 4th, 1968. I spoke over at the historian's tent yesterday, did a 30 minute presentation. The music was so loud, however, I can't upload it to YouTube, couldn't broadcast on Facebook Live because I don't want to be taken down because of copyright infringement. I may be able to put it in a podcast and upload it to a blog talk radio. We'll see if I can put it in the podcast. We'll see what I can do with that. Okay, so Juneteenth commemorates, contrary to popular belief, because people are all over the place what it is. It commemorates June 19th, 1865 in Galveston, Texas, when uh, uh, Major General Gordon Granger, okay, delivers General Number Order 3, General Number Order, Order 3. He goes in with 2,000 Union troops. This is two weeks after the Civil War ends. Civil War officially ends June 2nd, 1865, even though General Robert E. Lee had already surrendered in April of 1865, okay? But the Civil War officially ends June 2nd, 1865, the enslaved Africans in Galveston, Texas, don't get the message until June 19th, 1865. And this is where the term Juneteenth comes from. It's a contraction of June and 19th, okay? So uh, the celebration started in Galveston, Texas, and it, it was celebrated in Texas as African Americans move out of Texas and move up north and then out west during the Great Migration. Uh, 1915 to basically 1960 okay five million African Americans move from the south up north and out west they take this celebration with them all right and it spreads across the country so it's celebrated in over 40 states all right the first state to officially recognize Juneteenth it really and you know first state to officially recognize it of course was the state of Texas all right but people have a misconception of the Emancipation Proclamation. That's something I talked about yesterday, all right? And everybody be sure to visit my website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, okay? Um, and you can listen to podcasts on my shows. Um, you can uh, watch my YouTube videos. Follow us here on Facebook, The African History Network, The African History Network on Facebook, and share this broadcast on your Facebook page also, okay? When you follow us on Facebook, be sure to click on the option to turn on notifications as well, okay? So, a lot of people have a misunderstanding of the Emancipation Proclamation, all right? Number one, that's not what freed the enslaved Africans. It was the 13th Amendment 
which was ratified December 6, 1865 and adopted December 18, 1865. Okay? If you go to loc.gov, which is the Library of Congress's website, you can read the Emancipation Proclamation. It's very clear. It tells you that the states in rebellion, those states in the Confederacy, it tells you the states in rebellion, um, uh, the enslaved Africans there were free. But it, t but it tells you that the um, uh, states that are still in the Union, those people are still slaves, okay? The slaves that were still uh, in the states that were in the Union, they were still slaves, all right? The uh, states in the, uh, uh, like the border states, like uh, Missouri, Kentucky, Delaware, okay? They stayed in the Union. They were allowed to keep their slaves, all right? So, but what you have to understand is that because the South seceded from the Union, started with South Carolina, December 20th, 1861, I'm sorry, December 20th, 1860, all right, the year before the Civil War starts, because the South succeeds from the Union, they create their own government, elect Jefferson Davis to be the president, okay? They're no longer under the rule of the Union. So the Union cannot make any laws that impact the Confederacy. They succeeded from the Union. You had 11 states that succeeded from the Union, starting with South Carolina, December 20th, 1860, six weeks after Abraham Lincoln becomes president-elect on November 6, 1860, okay? Because Lincoln was the presidential candidate for the Republican Party. The Republican Party was founded in 1854, March of 1854, and is organized by groups of abolitionists as a direct backlash to the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 that allow the um, the expansion of slavery into western territories but it left it up to the inhabitants of those territories to determine whether or not they wanted to have slavery as opposed to it being dictated to them by the u.s government okay so you have southern states who think that lincoln is going to free the enslaved africans okay because he uh, was the presidential candidate for the republican party at his uh, i gotta get in some better to some better lighting Okay, so at his uh, inaugural address on May 4, on, on March 4th, 1861, he says that he has no intention of, of freeing enslaved Africans in uh, territories where slavery exists. Okay, so this enrages the abolitionists like Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was enraged when Abraham Lincoln said this because he said, wait a second, you're supposed to be the party of the abolitionists. But Lincoln was not an abolitionist. This is the mistake people make. Abraham Lincoln was not an abolitionist. Yes, Abraham Lincoln did think that slavery was morally wrong, but he was confused what to do about slavery. Abolitionists were clear. They were fighting to free the enslaved Africans. Lincoln was not fighting to free the enslaved Africans, number one. Number two, the Civil War was not fought to free or to end slavery. The Civil War was fought to bring the South back into the Union. It's the South that succeeds from the Union. It's the South that succeeds from the Union. And the Civil War starts April 12, 1861 with the attack on Fort Sumter in South Carolina. The Civil War was never fought to free the enslaved Africans. Lincoln said if, they, he, if he could keep slavery and keep the Union together, he would do that. This was his goal, to bring the South back into the Union because the South was the economic engine of the country. This is where the large plantations were. This is where a lot of your crops are coming from. This is where a lot of your cotton is coming from, okay? This was about economics. It wasn't about freeing enslaved Africans. However, 186,000 to 200,000 African Americans joined largely the Union Army and fought in the Civil War because they were fighting for their freedom. It wasn't because they loved America, they wanted to be free. They wanted their children to be free. So they fought on, on the side of the Union. Okay? So we have, to under, we have to understand this history. So we're out here celebrating Juneteenth. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand Juneteenth, don't, want, don't know what it is, things like this. Right? So we got we to deal with this history. Okay? We got to deal with this history, teach this to our children. So this is the closest thing that we have in this country dealing with the history of slavery to Independence Day. Okay, but also we should celebrate January 1st, 1804, when the Haitians declared their independence also. And the, the Haitians not only defeated the French, they also defeated the Spanish and the British who were allies of the French. They beat the hell out of all of them. Okay, so we should celebrate January 1st, all right, because that is, that, 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 uh, is when uh, the Haitians 
declare their independence, we should celebrate June 19th, not the 4th of July. We should not celebrate the 4th of July. No offense to any veterans. We love, we love the veterans, but we should not celebrate the 4th of July, okay? Because many of us were still enslaved Africans at that time, so they ain't celebrating our independence. We were still slaves. The Europeans, the British, the, 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 the colonies who were British, right? are fighting to separate from King George III, okay? They're fighting to separate from the separate from the monarchy and they're fighting for their freedom while they are simultaneously enslaving African people. So it's a it's a contradiction in my opinion based upon analysis of history. It's a contradiction, okay? To try to uh to celebrate the 4th of July. If you want to have a cookout, all right, you, you I guess so. All right. It's the 4th of July. See, this is what Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango called it. Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango wrote the book, book one and book two, African People and European Holidays, A Mental Genocide. The 4th of July, Y-O-U-L-I-E, the 4th of July, because they lied to us. All right? So if they want to celebrate that, they can celebrate that. If they want to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and celebrate a mass murderer named Patrick who killed thousands of Druids in Ireland and forced the Latin language and Christianity on, on the Irish and the Druids, they can celebrate that. March 17th, 1461 uh, is when uh, uh, Patrick died, okay? But it doesn't make sense for African people to celebrate that. You're celebrating the mass murderer who went into Ireland and killed people who, and the Druids, were practicing a form of religion, a spirituality that was was a watered-down version of the, of the version teaching of the uh, 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 watered down version of the teachings coming out of ancient Kim and ancient Egypt, which were coming from our ancestors. The fourth of you lie, Y O U L I E. You lie, you are, you are a liar, Y O U L I E. The fourth of you lie, okay. You got to read African people and European holidays and mental genocide by Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango. All right, what can we do in order to? get national recognition for Juneteenth. Okay, now here's the mistake that we make. We don't need Europeans to give us permission to do a damn thing. Stop asking Europeans for permission. You celebrate it. You don't, you don't need national recognition for Juneteenth. Just recognize it. We don't need a holiday for Malcolm. We take a holiday for Malcolm. We don't need them to recognize Marcus Garvey. We celebrate Garvey on August 17th. We made a mistake going to them for permission to celebrate Dr. King, no, damn it, you celebrate them yourself. You don't need permission from them for that. Stop going to them asking for permission to celebrate this. That's the mistake we make. We don't need their validation or permission. If you set up something like this out here, of course you're going to need a permit from the city. But the city of Atlanta, last time I checked, the, the uh, president of the city council, her name is Keisha. I mean, her, her name is Felicia. And the mayor's name is Keisha. Okay, see these are all vendors out here. These are all African-American owned vendors out here. So you come out here and support this. This is Father's Day also, right? All right, so we support Father's. This is all right. so it's all right to buy something for Dad on Father's Day because you're going to buy something for Mom on, Father, on Mother's Day. It's all right to buy something for Dad, but come out here and spend your money with African-American owned businesses. Don't go out to the white mall giving, giving, uh, black, uh, giving green dollars earned by black people out to the white mall. Come here and spend your dollars. One, five, 65 Martin Luther King Drive, uh, Mosley Park, Atlanta, Georgia. Now, there are Juneteenth celebrations happening all across the country. There are three in Detroit. I'm from Detroit, but I came out here because I'm speaking out here, and, and you know, people ask me to come out here, so this is my first time coming out here, all right? But uh, on Facebook, you have Juneteenth Facebook event invites. Check that out. Search for Juneteenth. It'll come up. Find a celebrate. Sound find a celebration in your area. Go celebrate. Go study this history. Go honor our ancestors, and don't ask for permission from Europeans to honor our ancestors. We're already being gentrified. They're already coming into our spaces, calling the police on them. So why are we gonna go to them to ask permission to honor who we are and honor our ancestors? All right. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Okay, now T. Shar said Obama made it National Day of Observa Observation in 2014. Google it. I think I may have heard something about that. Obama, President Obama understands it, but personally, 
I wouldn't, and, and you know, I liked a lot of President Obama's policies. I voted for it twice, okay? I tell people that. And over 100 of his policies have been reversed under Donald Trump. However, for Juneteenth, I would not have tried to get it a National Day of Recognition. Now, President Obama wanted to recognize it on his own because he understands Juneteenth. That's one thing. But I wouldn't go trying to get it a National Day of Recognition. I wouldn't do that for, for Juneteenth. Because, see, when you go and see Obama, President Obama is not the president anymore. So you have to think long term. All right. You have to think long term. All right. Well, see, I, I understand politics and I study policies. That's why I voted for President Obama. OK, that's why that's why I voted. And people need to read progress of the African-American community in the under under the Obama administration. Progress of the African-American community under the Obama administration. That's at WhiteHouse.gov. Most people who didn't vote did not read that document. That's documented evidence of how his policies positively impacted African-Americans. And those are being totally reversed on Donald Trump. We don't understand. This is one of the things I talked about that the historian tent. How many, how many African Americans were registered to vote in the 2016 election? Who can tell me? I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. How many African Americans were registered to vote in the 2016 election? Now this took place a year and a half ago. It had, it had detrimental consequences. We should know this. There were 16.4 million African Americans registered to vote in the 2016 election cycle. Okay? 16.4 million. Now, what percentage actually voted? I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We gotta know this information because if you under, if you can do math. Do you understand how elections have consequences? If you know how to do math, my mother was a math teacher. I'm not an expert in math, but I can count. So 59% of African Americans registered to vote in 2016 actually voted. Pew Research, the Pew Research Center did the research. I have the research and I think I think I may have it in my uh in my backpack. Because I got maybe 50 articles with me. I don't have my full stash because I'm traveling. So, 59%. Well, what percentage voted in 2012 when President Obama was on the on the ballot? See, the mistake that people make is that we get caught up in personalities, right? President Obama's policies were on the ballot, even though he wasn't. 66% of African Americans registered to vote in 2012 voted. That was the highest percentage in history that actually voted. When that happened, that scared the hell out of Republicans. 2013, Supreme Court case, Shelby County versus Holder. Shelby County is in Alabama. Alabama was ground zero for the fight for the voting rights after 1965, okay? Shelby County sued Attorney General Eric Holder. They said that the voting rights after 65 was oppressive, no longer needed. The Supreme Court gutted Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act Act which dealt with the oversight. Go to go to history.com, which is the official website of the History Channel. History ties to politics. Politics influences history. You can't separate the two. Okay. Usually, the people who say I'm gonna get involved in politics don't understand it and are broke. I'm keeping it real with you. You, the Koch brothers, are multi multi billionaires. Charles and David Koch. They're worth about forty billion dollars each. You think they're not involved in politics? And they vote also. You think they're not involved in politics? They're impacting policies that impact us. And they also vote. You think they don't vote? You got it twisted. No, but they impact policies also. We have the ability to impact policies, but we don't understand the power we have. So what happened was, after Shelby County versus Holder, you have 14 new states that had new voter ID laws to suppress the vote because the 2016 election cycle was the first election cycle that did not have the full power of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that most of us still don't even understand. So it allowed these all these new voter ID laws, these voter suppression laws to take place. It allowed the cross-checking system that not 1.1 million people off the voter rolls across the country instituted by Chris Kovac, who was the Secretary of State in the uh, Secretary of State in the state of Kansas. It not 1.1 million people off the voter rolls. Now, 
Let's do some math once again. Donald Trump won the key, the three key battleground states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. He won those states by only 78,000 popular votes. He won Michigan, where I live, 10,704 votes in Michigan. Jill Stein got 50,000 vote, 50, votes out of Michigan. I don't know why. She was at polling, polling about 2% in national polls. She didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning. She lied to black people, told us she was going to get us reparations. Really? How? How are you going to get us reparations? That got to go through, that has to go through the Congress. How are you going to pull that off? She could have promised every Negro a Cadillac Escalade and a BMW. And she wouldn't have to deliver on that either. We have to understand how to, sell, how to, how to separate ceremony from substance. We don't understand that. 50,000 50, people in Michigan voted for Jill Stein. 54,000 people in Michigan were wiped off the voter rolls because of the voter suppression tactic called the cross-checking system. That's 104,000 votes gone. Donald Trump won Michigan by 10,704 votes. So what happened was, see, people don't understand the, the Electoral College. And I have a whole lecture I've done dealing with the history of the Electoral College. Okay, I don't just deal with history. I deal with politics. I do research. I've been doing this for 26 years. I've been studying for 26 years. So this presentation right here, this deals, I deal with two things on here. I deal with how the three-fifths compromise of 1787 and how the Electoral College uh, and slavery empowered Southern states, okay? So this is available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. People don't understand this. The Electoral College created by the U.S. Constitution, 1787, the three-fifths compromise, Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3. It did not say that we were three-fifths of a human being. That's a total misunderstanding of history. It's a total misunderstanding of what it says, number one. You can go to loc.gov and read it yourself. Library of Congress's website, loc.gov, you can read it yourself there, okay? And then you have to understand the background history of it. So I deal with that in this presentation. This is available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. I have this at my vendor table here. It's too late in the game for us to be this ignorant. The information is available. It's too late in the game for us to be this ignorant and not understand how this works. Okay? And, and what happened was is that what happened was is that um, and let me post this right here. Try to pin this. Um, okay, so we got AfricanHistoryNetwork.com my website AfricanHistoryNetwork.com All right. Republicans feared our vote more than we valued our vote. This is what happened. Republicans feared our vote more than we valued our vote and they implemented these massive voter suppression tactics that most of us still haven't figured out. Everywhere I go when I do lectures, Atlanta, Baltimore, Detroit, I ask the question, how many African Americans were registered to vote 2016 election cycle? Nobody can tell me. A year, year and a half after the debacle of November 8th, 2016. Most people don't know what the cross-checking system is, okay? So, um, okay, so we have to understand how this works. Because there were 868 fewer polling places to vote at in the 2016 election cycle. That wasn't by accident. There were eight, the, na the nation.com, the nation.com. They, have, they did a lot of, they did, wrote a lot of articles, especially, especially Ari Berman for The Nation, wrote a lot of articles during the 2016 election cycle about the rampant voter suppression, okay, that took place. And they have one article that talked about how there, there were 868 fewer polling places for people to vote across the country during the 2016 election cycle. A lot of those polling places were in Af largely populated African American communities. I wonder why that is. So the question I ask people is, if your vote didn't matter, why did Republicans work so hard to keep you from voting? They went to the U.S. Supreme Court in Ohio. Well, you just had the U.S. Supreme Court case in Ohio, but I'm talking about during the election. They took a case to the U.S. Supreme Court. If your vote didn't matter, why are Republicans working so hard to keep you from voting? It's because they understand and fear the power of our vote, and we don't understand and respect the power of our vote. So this presentation right here, African American resistance in the era of Donald Trump, voter suppression, reparations, and how elections have consequences, okay? So this one here, I break, break all that stuff down. 
I break a lot of that down. I deal with uh, how Trump is systematically reversing policies President Obama had in place. Uh, they redeclared the war on drugs uh, uh, May 12th, uh, 2017. Okay? This is Jeff Sessions, Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Elections have consequences. We don't understand this, all right? So once again, I'm out here at Mosley Park in Atlanta. This is the last day of the Juneteenth Atlanta celebration, all right? And there are celebrations across the country. Juneteenth is, is officially June 19th, right? But they're having the celebration, three-day celebration here in Atlanta this weekend, 1565 Martin Luther King Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, Mosley Park, M-O-Z-L-E-Y, Mosley Park. Come on out. I'm Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm, I, I, I'm think, I, I think I'm speaking sometime today. We got we to gotta figure it out. I spoke yesterday at the historian's tent, but uh, I'm at my vendor table here. You see, when you walk by, you'll see it. Great black women in history. Okay, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And, uh, you know, I got my uh, presentation here, Great African Women in History, The Mothers of Civilization. It's available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Got my lectures dealing with the film Black Panther, Black Wall Street, a lot of stuff out here. So we have some special uh, deals for uh, Juneteenth, the last day of the celebration out here. All right, find a Juneteenth celebration in your area. Uh, listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation. Okay, visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com for more information. Listen to the podcast. If you like this type of information, also, uh, you can donate to the African History Network. That helps us. It helps us keep doing the work, uh, pay the bills, stay on the air. Uh, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. If you want to donate there, we definitely appreciate that. So I had to pay my way out here. I got to pay my way back. And uh, you want to donate 5 10 15 50 $100. We appreciate that, definitely. And uh, you can also set up for recurring donations. So if you appreciate the type of information we bring you, okay? If you appreciate the type of information we bring you, uh, if you want to donate, you can do that also, all right? All right, so... Let me get back over here in the light. All right. Okay, so look, we got to get out of here. Hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. Once again, remember, Angie Stone is performing today, R&B singer. Uh, sister had the song Brother. We know this is Father's Day. She's performing today. Free concert out here, 8.20 p.m. today. And then I think they're going to do a fireworks show after. So the day it ends is 10 a.m. Uh, to 9.30 p.m. today. Free event. Bring the family. Come on out. Mosley Park, Atlanta, Georgia. 1565 uh, Dr. King, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, this corrects wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time, and happy Father's Day. Peace.